Niche teaching, what is it? And how can I find my niche? James is gonna walk you through what niche teaching is, why it's valuable for both you and your students, and how you can go about finding your niche. I hope this is helpful for you. My name is James Liu. Um, I am a Chinese. I, I grew up in China. Um, went to school in um, uh, college and left China when I was 23 years old. I uh, came to the States for my graduate uh, graduate study. I got my PhD, my MBA, uh, spent 10 years in academia, uh, trying to become a scientist, but I didn't, didn't go down that route. Um, I went to, but I went to Harvard for three years for my postdoc, uh, for my postdoc training, focusing on um, medical devices and uh, pharmaceuticals, you know, trying to help uh, all kinds of diseases that we can we can take care of in the lab. And after three years of postdoctoral training at Harvard, then I kind of wanted to shift my focus to more of the business side of it. And then I uh, made a transition to management consulting. So I spent two years in management consulting, helping these life sciences companies, medical device, medical med tech, pharmaceutical companies with their marketing, sales, pricing, or things like how they can how can they launch drugs, you know, um, or launch drugs in, in, in Europe, right? How can uh, how they how can they price their drugs? Uh, what's the market access strategies they can use, right? Things like that. And after two years, I think in 2018, um, I was at that time I was, I mean Actually, I, ha I have been working with my own English teachers since day one. I, I got here in the U.S., so I worked with many English teachers. And in 2018, I was working with uh, two of my uh, English teachers on verbally, and they were like complaining. They were like telling me, "James, I might not be able to work with you anymore. This, this doesn't work for me. I'm, I might have to go back to my sales job because I can't. Uh, I can provide to my family by just teaching online." I was like, "Hey, tell me more." They were like, okay, the market is you know, are going down. They have to reduce the price. They, they're losing students. I was like, okay, uh, I can help. <laughs> I just offered to help them and uh, we made some progress. They were like, oh, the greatest brilliance. I didn't know. I believe so many people out there wouldn't know this as well. Teachers are suffering. James, why don't you have more teachers out there? I was like, okay. I always, I always wanted to have a business. So one of the reasons I did management consulting is to develop more business skills so I can uh, eventually become an entrepreneur. I was like, okay, I know teachers are poor. They're not the best niche in the world, but this is an opportunity. I mean, I was like, if I let it go, I, I can wait for another one, but I know I can help them and they need my help and I can make impact on this community. And uh, I was like, I have to do it. And they were poor because they're not doing the right thing. They can actually do much better. So um, I think that was the reason, a kind of inspiration for me to start a business. And uh, I just left my job and uh, started a business in January, 2019. Uh, January 10th, I registered my business and get started. So since then, um, I've been you know, teaching, coaching, uh, helping teachers, uh, we're growing. Now we have about 20 people on the team helping teachers, you know, teach entrepreneurs. We've helped over 4,000 teachers in the past four years. Um, so it's been an amazing journey for me. Um, and we we are offering something very different to the market. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Like yeah. these two things, a very new concept. And it's working. And uh, if you guys are not very familiar with this concept, you'll definitely ask questions and uh, follow me and let us help you. Mm -hmm. And you guys, James uh, is is being modest because his, his company is... Um, it's so well set up, James. And at the end of this webinar, you're going to see a link. Um, James has offered a very generous uh, discount to his 21 day teacher entrepreneur challenge and his free ebook. Um, so I would really encourage you to check that out if you guys are interested. I'll leave that at the end of the webinar. So stick around there and go ahead and put your questions in the chat for James. So James, we are all here because this, these magical words, niche teaching, keep getting thrown around. And a lot of people don't really know what they mean. So do you want to give us a little definition and perhaps some uh, examples of niche teaching and maybe uh, why it's important? Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, th so niche teaching is kind of new in this education like field industry, but it's not new out there. Like 
um, so many so many companies are doing it and business are doing it especially in life coaching fields are so many different niches um, niche teaching uh, in my in my definition is uh, work with is for teachers that work with uh, uh, a particular group of students with a specific problems okay so you don't just offer general teaching uh, i help english i help you with your english i teach english it's kind of very general some examples you know from our clients for example uh, we have clients working uh working with uh, it professionals with their presentation skills we have um, clients uh, working with uh, uh senior executives with their public speaking skills we have clients working with lawyers you know about you know, their communication skills like things like a particular group with specific problems so these are examples and uh and uh i guess you no know, next question is what you no know, why why new station right why new station how they can help teachers so usually when i when I got asked this question, there are like two folds at least. Like there's so many benefits when it comes to niche teaching, but the two very important uh, benefits, and that's you know the kind of the reasons why it's working so well. One is about marketing. So niche teaching helps a lot with marketing. It, it, it actually improves the effect effectiveness of your messages, your marketing. Now think about this, right, guys? So uh, we use social media for marketing. You are on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram all the time. Look at your fees, like so many things happening, right? And uh, if you're just another English teacher, nobody going to pay attention or just another English teacher, right? But if you have messages like, hey, are you an IT professional? Are you worrying about presenting to your team and uh, no missing opportunities, like you know, working on a big project, right? These things like really connects and resonates with your niche that get people's attention right away they're like oh yeah this is me like you're speaking to me oh I, I need to read this right so really increase and improve your marketing very much another kind of example i always use to kind of explain why niche teaching is more effective is like you now think about this right if you are standing outside of a, a train station of like people coming out and right, coming out and uh, it's like a crowd, like so many people coming out. At the same time, you're just waving, hey, 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 just like, hi, hey, hey. No, and nobody's going to pay attention to you. Just, I don't know, you know what, what you're doing there. Maybe you're just crazy, right? But if you know your audience, like you're targeting not everyone, you're speaking to like very specific people in that group, and you know their names, you're calling them out. It was like, hey, James. I guess maybe five out of one, uh, five out of two, 20, 30 people are no, their name are James. They were like, hey, are, are you calling me? Right? Right? That's how effective when you call them out, when you actually speak directly to them. Hi, lawyers. Hi, IT professionals. Hi, CEOs. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, this is me. Hey, who's calling me? So that's kind of how effective it is when it comes to marketing, when you have a particular niche. Not only that, you can call them out. You know their problems, where they're struggling with, why they are learning English, right? Why they're learning English, you know very clearly. And that's all important when it comes to marketing messages, right? So that's how you get people's attention. People are follow you, they check you out, they, they work with you. So it's just simply put, right? Niche, niche teaching, how that helps with the marketing. And the second fold or second benefit for niche teaching or for teaching, like why people are doing niche teaching and our clients are charging much, much higher rates. So we're talking about like $100 an hour, $150, $200 an hour with niche teaching. The reason being, it also helps with your teaching. So that's the one thing people don't understand it was like, I'm a teacher. I teach people English. You know, I've, I've helped 1,000 students. I just, I helped them. But yes, you're just on the surface. You're just teaching people English. You're not really helping them solve the problem. No, uh, I mean, most of, the, most, most of you guys here are teachers or whoever, whoever watching this video right now are teachers. Think about the students you helped. Did you even care why they're coming to you to learn English? Did you even care like, why they're learning English? How, what a the problem they have, right? You say, oh, what do you want? Grammar, let's work on grammar. Oh, vocabulary, let's get, let's vocabulary, right? Oh, you want, you don't know how to write, let's write. But deep down, there's always a reason for them to learn English or learn anything. And for niche teachers, we focus on the problem. We don't, we don't care like, 
Okay, you want to learn English? Why? Oh, you want to present? You want to present better? Oh, you don't feel like you're confident presenting your work to your team? You feel like you're not you're not connected? Okay, let's fix that. Right? I'm not just here teaching you English. I'm actually here to fix the problem. All right, and that does not work when you teach everyone. Everyone has different problems, and you're gonna be yes, asked. You want to deliver that type of results with. Them. All, all the students come to you. There's no way you can do that. But with the niche teaching, you have a particular group with specific problems. That every client, so that's something people don't really appreciate. Every client, every student you have that come to you, they have the same problems. They want the same thing. Think about that. And you're gonna do you're gonna keep doing the same thing over and over again. You're gonna be like a much better at what you do every single time. And that's why. Our client starts like fifty dollars an hour. After ten students increase to one hundred dollars an hour, one hundred fifty dollars. And people start paying, like still paying, because they're not they're not just English teacher. They're like a problem solver. Like they're helping them with the actual problems, right? People like these students getting promoted, getting a job, moving abroad after working with these new teachers. So, I think to summarize, these are two most important things like benefits. Why niche teaching? Should be considered why why teachers need to think about new teaching. One would be like a marketing, how effective your marketing can be. Like when you talk to a specific group of people, and the other one will be improving your teaching, focusing on the problem, right? You can deliver better, and then you can charge a higher rate. So basically, two. I, I don't know if this is too much or I mean overwhelming, no. but these are, so simply put, that's what I would say. Yeah. Well, and James, a lot of teachers, I think many of us go into our own kind of independent teaching and we say, all right, I'm going to cast this net real wide, see who I can get and reel them in and we'll see what happens. And hopefully I can make some money out of this. And it sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. And so I think if we're going into it like that, there's not really a plan. There's not a business plan in place. And when you set things up, like James is telling us, you know, choose your niche. And we're going to get to that in a second, because I think probably some of you are here and you're like, but what's my niche? And <laughs> yeah, we're going to get there. But the idea here is that casting the net wide doesn't mm. always get the desired results. And so I love yeah. that you brought up, you get yeah. better at what you're doing if you yeah. niche down. And yeah. I would even speak to the fact that um, when you niche down, you can hone in your materials more. You don't have to have materials for every exactly. age group, for exactly. every type of professional you might teach, for adults and kids. No, niche down, get one good thing to use and really offer your students an excellent yeah. experience yeah. and product. So um, yeah. I love that, James. Well, let's let's venture into that next step of what could be a niche? How could we find our niche? I've heard it explained a few different ways, um, but what would you say a, a good step-by-step -step type idea would be to find someone's niche? Yeah, so um, I, actually that is a very um, challenging part for a lot of teachers. Um, people have been thinking about niche teaching. They were like, I just can't get over with a niche. Like, how, what should I do, right? So um, our team, like we have exercises, you no, know, kind of ready and provided to our clients um, to really take a look at what they have done. We look at their experience, look at their passion, look at um, you no know, the expertise they already have. Then really put together a niche that works works for them, following their passion that makes sense in terms of like a marketing size, market market size, market. No uh, potential, but if you guys are, are are thinking about a niche, I think the first advice I will give you is don't overthink. People are like take take this too seriously. Like, well, it's what like, it's what it's like. Oh, I'm getting married with a niche. I have to be very careful, right? It's not. You know, you 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 want to do a niche. You want to find a niche. You want to do it. I I would say just say hey. Think about it, do it for two months. If it doesn't work, do something else, all right? So it's not a big deal. I and mean, that's why as some teacher told me, hey, James, I've been thinking about niche for a year. Help me. I was like, no, no get it done. Just no, find one, do it, right? And then you are learning from the market feedback. That's one thing you have to understand, right? You don't know what's your best niche. We don't know either, but we're going to test it and see how the market reacts and see the results to help you improve and revise. And also when, when, I, when we work with our clients, we tell them, 
whatever we start with, that's a starting point. And then we're gonna improve and refine the niche based on the market feedback, the results you're getting. And eventually you will have very well-defined niche at the end, right? But you no, know, back to the question, uh, how are you gonna define the niche? Basically we look at looking at the three things. One is your passion, like what's your passion about? Because you no, know, end of the day, you are starting a business, right? You're gonna find something you're really passionate about. You feel like, oh, I can do that for the next 10 years. I, I wouldn't you know, kill myself for doing that, right? So I'm gonna do it for the next 10 years. It's something you're passionate about. And the second, secondly, it will be um, something that has a good market, a good market, right? Usually I always tell people like every niche has a good market, right? It really depending on like what's your preference. Some people want to target Asia, some people want to do European countries, you know, it's really depending on like the regions, the times, all that. So, so they'll find something like working, there's a market. So another another bad example is like some people like really, really narrow down like to a very, very specific niche, which is which not even necessary. And I remember a, a teacher in the 20 challenge, uh, I came across her niche. She was like, I'm going to help. Um, uh, female entrepreneurs living in Boston who want to do this. I was like, <laughs> oh <my gosh. laughs> why, 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 why do you want to only help a female entrepreneurs? I understand, but living in Boston, why? I mean, why don't just you know target the whole U.S. Right, living in Boston and something else. I wanted to do very, very specific things. I was like, yeah, but it's gonna be very difficult for you find to find people like that. So you want to have a balance, right? The market size is important. The number two, number three is something you no, know, you have experience with. So I don't feel like learning completely new things because because of the niche is not is not necessary. So if you're a teacher who never done something like a writing course, don't don't do writing, right? If you have never done accent modification coaching, don't do that, right? Do something you are already familiar with. You can already do. And then get it started, right? So three things: think about your passion, think about the market. Don't be too specific, right? Then number three is look at your expertise, what you are good at, what you can do already, right? So these three things um, can be very, very helpful if you think about these three things. Yep, that's awesome. Um, I I love that you're bringing in what we're excited about, what you have experience in, and what a market. A market that's out there. Um, some of us, I'm going to go ahead and make a guess. I bet most of you, you can you can put a little emoji in the chat if you have taught for an online ESL company. Put a little emoji in the chat. Type something. Because I'm going to guess the majority of us have taught in some form there. Now, yeah. that is not a niche. <laughs> that's tutoring online, kind of. Um, yeah. Pick the kid that you had the most success with. Think about that kid. Mm -hmm. I have a few kids in mind where I'm like, we jived. We saw progress. I got mm -hmm. to know their families. I got to see them have little victories in our classes. And so it was one of those things where I was like, that is the kid that I'm reaching out to. And that's where my niche is going to be. And so for me, it's kind of been this public speaking type thing, which feels weird. But at the same time, it's, you know, elementary, upper elementary, middle school, high school, public speaking classes yeah. have kind of been my yeah. niche. And so I would encourage you guys, if you're if you're trying to, you're struggling to come up with your niche, think about that because perhaps you came from this very general ESL background or something like it. Um, mm -hmm. And you're trying to figure out where you want to head. So yeah. Um, yeah, actually, just very quickly comment on that. I know uh, there are quite a few um, teachers who want to stay with the children on markets. Uh, yeah, it, it can work. It really depending on how you position yourself, right? Um, for example, we we actually have a client. Um, she's um, she's gonna gonna target China market, and she's gonna help with uh, more like uh, high school students prepare their um, their applications, exams for going up for studying abroad, right? So that, that is a pretty cool niche, like really specifically for, again, solve the problems you have, right? We had a client one time ago, she she actually teaches like much younger kids, uh, three to six, seven years old, but uh, she's using like the uh, phonic, right? Phonics. So, mm -hmm. Uh, phonics, um, yeah, so uh, uh, focusing on like speaking part of it, a really very effective 
you know, kind of methods to help people with that particular uh, problem. You no, know, um, these are are good. Uh, right. If you just say, oh, I teach children English, it was like still general, like what you good at? Now, even like sometimes you can specify the approach. So I teach children through gaming. Like, okay. I teach children through music. Uh, we do have a we, ha we had a client, you know, actually she teaches children using music, music. No, actually, she teaches beginners, get them like with the rhythm. And, and she, got, she gets really good results because the students who uh, learn from her have very natural accents mm -hmm. because the music, yeah. like the rhythm, like they, they learn from her. So these are the setting points. Like that's what I good, I'm good at, right? Think about the approach, what, I, what you're good at, and, uh, and the position yourself. So that's, that's, that's your value proposition. That's how you differentiate, differentiate yourself from others. Yeah. yeah. And I, uh, I also would identify with the idea of imposter syndrome. So you're saying position yourself. Oh, but I'm just a teacher. Oh, but I've never run a business before. Oh, but I can't charge that. Why would anybody pay me that? Um, if, if you feel me, <laughs> give me a little thumbs up there because I feel like most teachers I talk to are like, but how could I ever charge that much? And so I would say, um, James is giving us lots of really good examples here. And I would even say, we need to step up as well. Own your experience, own your results that you've done and show the results. So, you know, have video clips, have, um, you know, feedback. I sometimes record little sections of my classes and I send it to the family. I don't send it to anybody else, but I send it to the family. I say, hey, look at this little presentation they did in class today. Exactly. I give feedback after every class. I give yeah. homework if they want yeah. it. I give a little preview yeah. if they want it. Value added is up to us. And so it's not just to show up and teach thing that perhaps we were used to at some point, um, but it's, there's yeah. there's a lot of legwork yeah. that goes into this. Yeah. And, um, I'm glad that you mentioned that, Melissa. Um, imposter syndrome is so true there. Like, you no, know, everyone has it. I have it. Everyone has it. It's really about what you do whenever you step outside of your comfort zone. You're doing something, you're going to do something that you never done before. You're going to have the imposter syndrome. And, um, and uh, uh, we, we um, about mindset, we actually focus a lot in all of our training. So when you work with us, half of the training, half of the things we do is help you with your mindset because we see this as a very challenging journey. It's like becoming a business owner, become an entrepreneur. We help you change you. So we're not here to help you get students. We help you become a different person that can run a business and get students on your own, right? And uh, I had an interview, if you guys want to check it out. So interview yesterday with Richard. So he's charging $1,200 for 10 sessions right now. Okay, $1,200, 10 sessions for one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, and people ask him, like, you no know, in-person syndrome, all that. He has that. He had it. And uh, what he did was, like, whenever he has these moments, like, doubting himself, he was, like, just uh, thinking about all the good results you've got for students. And look at the testimonials. Like look at the messages you received, right? See the results you are you are delivering to to make yourself like feel okay. I can do this. I am worth that much. I'm doing a really good job. I'm helping others, right? I'm making impacts. So these are very important so to always connect and always reflect and work on your mindset. So. Absolutely. No, everyone has. Uh, should we that. should we give a shout out to Steffi, who is uh, part of Boi Strategy? Uh, yes. She works with James. Uh, Steffi's going to be coming on to do a webinar with us as well um, in March. So if you're interested in that, um, please please join me. I, I had a, I've had a couple of brief conversations with Steffi so far, James, and she is like, I left. Yeah. I was like, I yeah. could go conquer the world right now. I feel so yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Um, very cool uh, person. Yeah, so yeah. you guys, we have talked and talked, but I want to hear if there's any questions for you all, please uh, go ahead and raise a hand and I'll try to let's see. Let's see. Let's uh, open this up. Anybody have any questions? All right. Joanna, what if my niche is not profitable? All right. Joanna, if you want to elaborate on that a little bit, would you mind? Is there... Any more that you could give us on that? Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Well, my passion is history. I love history. I majored in history. And even though I'm currently teaching English as a second language in a brick and mortar school, I still help my students out in history. And I keep uh, hearing, no, there's not enough money for it. Give it up. Please find another niche. But 
I just don't want to. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm really into it that I like it. I would rather teach teenagers, adults who who are into that kind of stuff. And yeah, and yeah, I yeah. don't know if it's not profitable. Mm -hmm. I mean, should I find something? So, Johanna, one thing like I, I, would, I would tell this to everyone who wants to start a business, okay. Don't listen to others. <laughs> if they if they know, I mean, if they are successful entrepreneurs, they would never say that to you. Okay, so just by what by listening to what they told you, I know they've never started a business or they never had a success in their business you know, with their own business. Okay, so I, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say there's like a profitable niche and non profitable niche, right? It's just different there, there's different business models right depending on what type of niche you have what type of market you have so if let's say this if in the world nobody wanted to pay more than 50 dollars for something like this good i'll just help 1000 people then i'll make 50 thousand right if there's like people want to pay one thousand, sure, I'll just you know I'll 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 have one hundred, I'll cut it off, and that's it. Right? There are different models for different niches, different business ideas. You just have to find the model that works for you, and um, and also like fifty dollars in yeah, fifty dollars. People just want pay want to pay fifty dollars. They might not you 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 might feel like oh that doesn't justify my one on one. They offer groups. If you're like, oh, I don't even want to offer groups. Okay, put together a digital course and passive, right? So there are always yeah. things you can offer. Like a flex yeah, course. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And the other thing is, I believe there are people who are very into, into the history, right? I, we have clients doing literature, literature reading. Like, there are always like people into something and uh, you just need to figure out a way to get in front of them and get get a visibility in front of them right they always are people into this we have math teacher math teacher a, a, a very sweet lady from russia living in the uk right now math teacher i mean it's got clients from linkedin like teaching math right and we're saying no you just have to find a way to get yourself in front of your audience and then tell them what you can deliver have a chat and then offer what is working, right? What is working depending on the price you charge, then you're gonna be able to make it. Yeah, and this might require, you know, a quick, you know, 10 minute um, meeting, trial, discussion, uh, that sort of thing. So there are things that, you know, we might have to step out of our comfort zone and say, oh, why would I do that? No, no, it's, if, if they're gonna invest in you, this is an investment, um, give them, you know, a 10, 15 minute chat to see if there's a way that you can yeah. make them yeah. feel comfortable, meet their needs. Yeah. And another just a very quick tip for you, Joanna. Thank you. Um, think about think about people around you, like or even just us online, like uh, are you interested in history? Like, you must know and some people really interested in this, right? And figure out where are these people online? I believe there are like group, Facebook groups about these type of topics. No, it's not like history, people it's not it wouldn't be that obvious but there are things like okay if people who are interested in history learning history what type of books they will read what type of movies they might watch right or what 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 what, what other habits they might have they may be like you no know, people who really want to go to the historic sites you no know, traveling like with that you can find them right find them and then show up and tell them hey this is me this is what i do let me know if you're interested it's, it's so simple just like that you have to find these people yeah. and then i mean i i, I mean you don't don't get surprised when people want to pay a thousand dollars for this type of thing all right so there are people who want to do this right so yeah just go out there find them and uh, ask them hey what do you want how can i help you that's it. Okay. That's awesome. awesome. Joanna, Thank if you I remember so much. correctly, you have some tech skill, true, right? Um, and so I would even say lean into that because if you can create, like James mentioned, a digital course or what some of us who are familiar with OutSchool mm. might say a, a flex course, um, you know, offering something in a package where you don't have to minute to minute teach. It does take some considerable work on the front end, but um, that sort of thing is um, okay. an option too. 
Yeah, that's, that definitely that's is. True. Thank that's you, true. both of you. We are coming up on the end. So if there are any more questions, please get them in. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put James's very generous discount code right there for the Entrepreneur Challenge. James, can you give a little explanation of what the 21 Day Challenge is about? Because it's very cool. So, I, there are, you guys, this ebook is so good. And there's quizzes. There's a lot involved. So can you give us a little oh, yeah. um, sneak peek? Absolutely. So the ebook, uh, I stopped counting it, but I think by now probably has been downloaded by, you know, downloaded over 100,000 times, the ebook. Okay. So it's a free ebook. Uh, it has 54 pages and uh, I use very large fonts, you know, a lot of spaces and you can finish in two, two, two hours. Okay. I'm not even joking. You can finish the ebook in two hours. You were like, oh my God. I made so many mistakes and this is gonna work. This is how it work, okay? So so definitely read the ebook. Um, it's free, okay? It's free, just just download and read it. Uh, then about the 21 day challenge, usually people, what happens, you know, I, I can even predict and some of you read the ebook, get really pumped up. Okay, oh my God, I can do this. Then you join the 21 day challenge. And that's the marketing strategy we use. We use ebook to get you warm up. You, no, then you are ready to take action and working with us, right? So then about the 21 day challenge, it's a group training that we offer. We offer uh, once a month. It starts on the first day of each month. Okay, last 21 days. So in the 21 days, you will be working with me, my team, in a Facebook group. Every day you receive one short video, about 10, 20 minutes, and you watch that video and that will explain there's one simple concept so they ask you to do one simple thing, then you do it, move on to the next day. Okay, then this repeats 21 times, then by the end of it, you were like, okay, oh my God, I have my niche now, I have my message now, I have my program structure now, I know how to do marketing, I know how to do sales. That's how effective it can be. In 21 days, you're gonna be able to learn all of these and get started. So every month we, get, we have teachers who got students before the challenge finishes. Mm -hmm. So these teachers are getting students at, le at least $50 an hour and $60 an hour, and they're thrilled. So it's very effective, stra effective strategies we use in 21 Challenge, and it definitely worth the money. Um, we have 35% discounts um, from $197 to $127. So um, use that link if you guys are interested, but if you don't believe what I'm saying here, no, check out the ebook first, okay? So read the ebook first and then see if this is going to work for you. Cool. Awesome. Um, we got one more question right here. Citizens who are interested in running for local school board, have you noticed non teachers teaching how to classes on campaigning? Uh, cool. Interesting. Non teachers teaching how to classes on campaigning for political office. Have, is that a niche you've seen, James? People interested in campaigns. Being how to classes on campaigns. Yeah. Um, uh, believe it or not, okay, uh, we had a client. She, I mean, unfortunately, he didn't finish. It, it, something got in her uh, in his life, and he has to pause. We have a client. Um, he's very, very much involved in uh, campaigns. Um, no, and, and he he worked with a, as a health care like, supporter, but he's very much into that. And we actually started this started something similar, like to this niche. So helping. So basically, I, I don't know if I quite, I understand this fully, but what we are trying, what we were, we were trying to do is, they're like uh, people in politics, they want to speak better English and they want to be more influential. They want to get on bigger stage and uh, he wants to help people like them. Cool. All right. Wow. So that was the idea. And he's pausing right now because something happened to, to, to his family, but that's, that was a good idea. I liked it. I was like, yeah. again, I'm, I'm pretty flexible. I feel like, yeah, I feel like there's, if there's like one person you think in the world, in the world gonna need this, there are like a million people, like so many people out there, you can definitely find it. And whenever people find something like that, oh my God, you help people like that? No, that's kind of an impression. I got, I got this a lot of people like, James, are you only work with the ESL teachers? I was like, yeah. They were like, oh my God, you must be the expert. You must be, you must be the specialist. You must know so, know so much because no, it's so specific. It was like, right. it's, no, think about this. It's like 
somebody only like help people like you, that's kind of feeling and that's that's the trust you know, immediately if you can people can build. And if you're like so familiar and you just you must know them very well. So that's another benefit of doing niche teaching. So you know, impression, right. impression you can create at first. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know if that answers your question, Nancy. Uh, something similar, I think, uh, along the lines. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. Well, thank you, James. And I, I do agree. Um, I love that this your business was born out of being a student yourself. Um, and so I am so grateful that this is something that you have stepped out into d despite imposter syndrome. I think we can all identify with that, but I am so grateful that this is something that you've stepped out into. And um, I know that a lot of people can benefit from it. So please take advantage of those links. I'll throw them in the chat one more time. Um, check those out, at least download that ebook because it is so helpful. Download it, save it to your computer, look at it in chunks, but get that in your system and then hop in that 21 day challenge. Um, so James, thank you so much for being here. You guys, I'm so glad each of you are here. And if you're watching this later on, um, please go give James a follow, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Yeah, LinkedIn James yeah. Yes, absolutely. You find me on, on these social media platform and uh, happy to um, you know, work with you whenever we can uh, to help you with your business. And But don't hesitate to reach out with questions. Uh, we are here to help, right? Um, yeah, thanks for having me here, Melissa. And does, um, I feel so good about this webinar. I hope I help a little bit. But uh, hopefully we can all see each other again in the future. Absolutely. Well, and as we say goodbye, I do want to just say thank you to Ve. Ve is a platform that we are using right now. Uh, Ve is a wonderful tool for teacherpreneurs um, who are looking to keep things all in one. So if you're looking to invoice and schedule and meet and communicate with your students or families, it's a wonderful thing. So if you are looking to do that, um, get out your camera, uh, take a little camera photo of that QR code and you can hop in there and that'll just get you $50 cash when you teach your first course on Bay. But we are so grateful to Bay for getting us through today. And I hope that you guys have a wonderful morning, evening, or um, afternoon, wherever you are. And thanks again, James. Good to see you. Hi, everyone. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Take care.